and all of that. Let let the real fighters fight each other, and then just see who's who. And they all they all challenges, you know. They all different styles, you know. So they all they all gonna be challenges. Frank Martin has just dropped the bombshell, giving an insane warning to Gervonta Davis ahead of their much anticipated fight. Being me doing doing what I do, and uh, you know, staying calm, staying composed. You know, I feel like I feel like I got me. I feel like it took me a lot. It took me some time to feel how I feel, you know, as a fighter, you know. But I feel like I got it all. You know, I'm, I'm confident in who I am as a fighter. You know, I, I can I can box. I got defense. I can, you know, if I want to sit down and knock a guy out, I can do that. You know, if I want to box a guy, I can do that. With the match scheduled for the upcoming summer, excitement builds as both fighters are anticipated to engage in heated exchanges, both in the ring and on social media, leading up to their highly anticipated clash. In a comprehensive analysis, Showbiz the Adult has previously underscored the significance of Tank's prospective transition to the 140 pounds division as a pivotal step to cement his legacy in the realm of boxing. He said, stepping up to the 140 pounds division isn't just a move, it's a monumental leap towards greatness. Tank's journey from 130 to 140 pounds is more than weight. It's about legacy. This discussion isn't aimed at diminishing Tank's stature or drawing direct comparisons with other fighters such as Devin Haney. Instead, it delves into the realm of rationality and logic, highlighting the strategic maneuvers essential for Tank to carve out his position among the pantheon of boxing's all-time elites. Showbiz added, in the squared circle, legacy is forged by the fires of challenge and adversity. For Tank, moving to 140 pounds is not running from competition, it's sprinting towards history. The primary argument revolves around the notion that the 135-pound boxing division fails to provide Davis with the necessary challenges to cement his legacy as an all-time great. North, right, I mean, it's just more natural for him. He wants to make his own uh, legacy. Showbiz emphasized Davis's previous venture into the 140-pound division when he fought Mario. Barrios. He said, Tank's encounter with Barrios at 140 pounds was a tale of power, discomfort, and strategic caution. It was a revealing chapter that underscored the need for a bigger stage to etch his name among the boxing immortals. The examination delved further into historical cases like Vasily Lomachenko and Floyd Mayweather, who encountered comparable hurdles when transitioning to higher weight classes but succeeded through their exceptional talents. Showbiz said, just like Lomachenko and Mayweather, Tank has the skill and the heart to conquer higher divisions. It's not about size. It's about strategy, speed, and spirit. Moreover, Showbiz contended that the real challenge and noteworthy bouts for Davis lie in the 140-pound weight class. He doesn't fight black slick fighter sh All of that is a race now, fighting Frank Martin. I am extremely interested to see how Javante Tank Davis looks against a fighter who has high IQ, great movement, fights off his back foot, not much of a puncher, so he's more economical with his punches, and Tank has to box him aggressively and go get him. I just want to see that dynamic, see how Tank look. It can help me visualize. Fighters such as Shakur Stevenson present formidable matchups essential for cementing Davis's legacy. Showbiz said, the journey of a fighter is measured by the caliber of his opponents. At 140 pounds, formidable adversaries like Shakur Stevenson await, offering Tank the battles worthy of a legend. On the other hand, Mayweather Promotions, the company promoting Tank, has recently put to rest any speculation about him stepping up to higher weight classes. Leonard Ellerby has offered insights into Tank Davis's potential move to the 140 pounds division, highlighting the complexities associated with such a decision. Ellerby said, Tank's ability to fight competitively from 130 to 135 pounds speaks volumes of his versatility, challenging the traditional trajectory of weight climbing. However, Ellerby also acknowledged the challenges of moving up to the 140 pound division, emphasizing Davis's physique and the increased level of competition from naturally larger opponents in that weight class. He said, Tank's potential tenure at lightweight shows a thoughtful approach to career progression, weighing risks against the backdrop of legacy and health. Ellerby's comments reflect a cautious approach to the idea of Davis competing at 140 pounds, taking into account both the physical and tactical considerations at play. Ellerby has also shared his insights and forecasts concerning the matchup with Frank Martin. He remains steadfast in his belief that Tank possesses the ability to emerge victorious against Martin. Ellerby asserted, Frank Martin can't beat Tank Davis. None of the 
these guys can beat Tank Davis, so I wouldn't use the term live dog. Frank's a good fighter, but he can't beat Tank. While acknowledging Martin's proficiency, Ellerby remains unwavering in his confidence in Tank's dominance. Frank Martin might be seen as a live dog in that bout should it come to fruition, but the truth remains Frank Martin can't beat Tank Davis. He's undoubtedly a skilled fighter, Frank is. Ellerby also confirms that Tank is set to face the opponents that fans are eagerly requesting. It's only a question of when, as Tank Davis is dedicated to achieving his goals and remaining in the sport, even though the timing may not always be ideal. He said, I know Tank's determination firsthand, and I can affirm that he will indeed face the opponents the fans are clamoring for. Tank Davis isn't going anywhere. He's here to stay and is wholly committed to achieving his goals, even if the timing doesn't always work out perfectly. Meanwhile, Martin appears to be ready for his fight against Davis. Martin has been giving stern warnings to him, and it appears that things are going to get serious from here. I feel like I just got, I'm well-rounded, and I got something none of them got. A fight. I think that'd be a great fight, too. You know, I think that'd be a good fight if you accept the fight, you know. From my understanding, he turned me down. After their sparring session, Martin shared his reflections on his time in the ring with Tank, noting, It was good work. I held my own. He held his. Good experience. He's sharp. I don't think Leo is going to have the speed or the reflexes. You gotta have some power. You gotta be able to hold your own in there because Tank's a beast. Furthermore, when asked if Gervonta Davis was the hardest hitter he had ever encountered, Martin clearly said no. He said, Nah, it's a Mexican boxer I sparred with. His name is Pablo. Martin's personal account of a sparring session with Davis offers insight into his confidence and understanding of Davis. Davis's skills. He speaks positively about the experience, emphasizing his capacity to equal Davis's talent in the ring. Moreover, Martin doesn't seem bothered by the threats. I'm right up there with him. I believe I could defeat any of them, so I belong right there with him, he said. Martin's remarks highlight his unshakable confidence and ambition in the highly competitive lightweight division. By positioning himself as a strong contender capable of defeating Davis, Martin declares his readiness to reach the top of the boxing world. Yeah, I do good. I do, I do, I do good against uh, aggressive fighters. You know, I do real good against aggressive fighters. You know, you might mess around and run into, you know, the thunder and the lightning, you know. <laughs> man down. On the other hand, Gervonta Davis's coach Calvin Ford and his assistant Kenny Ellis are tasked with researching Martin for the upcoming fight. It appears that Tank took Martin's warning seriously and he is now really working hard to answer him correctly. Ellis disclosed that he has started watching videos of Martin to observe how he reacts to significant impacts on his head. Ellis said, Phase 1. Up early studying Frank Martin's skull. He has very thin zygomatic bone and a thin muscle layer. There's a very high maxillary sinus. Man, oh man. He's a good kid with a good team, though. No disrespect. Martin's imminent jeopardy underscores Ford and Ellis's thorough preparation of Davis for his upcoming fights. Martin's not going to fight him. If Martin do fight him, he's going to be off balance at times because he's not that type of fighter. Mm -hmm. In a previous interview with Premier Boxing Champions, Ellis expressed his commitment to the sport, emphasizing his dedication to supporting the personal growth of young individuals. Ellis said, It rips you apart because you know you can't save them all. But it doesn't stop Calvin and me from thinking we can't can't save them all. You have people out here robbing people. They run across them again and they get shot. People are killing people for no reason. Today's generation deals with things differently than when I was their age. Meanwhile, Puerto Rican boxer Emmanuel Rodriguez provided an insightful evaluation of the upcoming fight, expressing both anticipation and a certain level of unpredictability regarding its result. Rodriguez recognized the difficulty of forecasting the bout, pointing out the variance in experience between Frank Martin and Davis. He said, experience in boxing isn't just tallied by fights, but for Forged in the heat of the gym, the grind of sparring, and the crucible of pressure, it's in these arenas that a fighter truly evolves. Nonetheless, he underscored that experience isn't exclusively acquired through actual fights. He stressed the significance of rigorous gym training, intense sparring sessions, and the capacity to navigate through the atmosphere and pressure, all of which are pivotal in a fighter's evolution. He said, Power in the ring is a game changer, and Davis's knockout prowess is undeniable, but it's the mastery over weaknesses that often decides the fate of the bout. Rodriguez underscored Davis's formidable power as a notable asset, highlighting his ability to deliver knockout blows to his adversaries. It's hard, bro. I, uh, Frank doesn't have the experience that I know of. Because like I said a little early in the video, um, you don't gain experience inside a ring. If you know how to control just the atmosphere and the whole pressure of the fans, then that's basically the, experience, the only experience you could get. Uh, the experience you really get that in the gym, you know, training section, smart partners, and that's where you actually get that type of experience. But, um, I don't know, man. Javante got that power punch to knock anyone the fuck out.
Oh. Nevertheless, he also highlighted specific weaknesses in Davis's approach, particularly his struggle in handling jabs and maintaining distance, evident in his matches against Rolando Romero and various other opponents. According to Rodriguez, Davis's struggle with jabs and distance is an Achilles' heel, one that can tilt the scales if not addressed. But the ring is also a place of surprises and redemption. In light of these observations, Rodriguez inclined towards Davis, granting him a 60 to 40 advantage in the bout. Delving into the southpaw and southpaw scenario, Rodriguez emphasized its capacity to unveil the true prowess of a southpaw fighter. He added, the southpaw showdown is more than a clash of stances. It's a revelation of skill, adaptability, and the nuanced art that is southpaw boxing. Additionally, he dispelled the notion that Davis shies away from facing fellow black fighters, citing Davis's extensive amateur career where he demonstrated his boxing finesse against a wide spectrum of opponents. He said, while Davis carries significant advantages, it's the execution under the lights that defines a champion. Rodriguez praised Davis for his exceptional boxing skills, reflecting on his memorable showings in national competitions and the esteemed Golden Gloves tournaments. Davis showcased not just formidable strength, but also remarkable agility, footwork, and a talent for strategic counterpunching. He said, the true spirit of boxing lies in the blend of strength and subtlety. Davis's performance against Gamboa wasn't just about power. It showcased his adaptive strategy and boxing intellect. Rodriguez subtly suggested that Davis might have leaned too heavily on his raw power, neglecting to fully unveil his entire repertoire of abilities. But I've seen a lot of mistakes also. You don't like when they jab him and keep him at bay. I've seen it with Rudy Romero. Um, I've seen it with a couple of fighters and... Again, he knocked out Roddy Romero, but before Roddy Romero got knocked out, Roddy Romero was, you know, throwing a jab and was a little frustrating, a little bit, uh, frustrating, a little, uh, Devontae Davis. So, let's see, man, it's a close fight, bro. I have it edging out. 60, 40 for Boxing expert Eddie Hearn shared his perspective on the forthcoming clash between Davis and Martin when asked about his forecasts. Hearn expressed confidence in Tank Davis, viewing the bout as favoring him. He said, Both fighters have had impressive journeys to get to this point, which has only amplified the anticipation. When it comes to performing under the bright lights and high stakes, Davis has consistently shown he can rise to the occasion. While not expecting a surge in viewership, Hearn acknowledged the bout's potential as a well-matched spectacle. He depicted the Davis-Martin showdown in the lightweight category as captivating, emphasizing the blend of skill, strength, and strategic finesse each pugilist possesses. Andre Ward's insights into the Frank Martin versus Gervonta Davis matchup are particularly valuable given his experience and success in the ring. He said, Discipline is what separates good fighters from great ones. In the context of Martin versus Davis, he believes that Martin's ability to stick to a well-thought-out strategy could be the key to countering Davis's aggressive and powerful style. Ward elaborates on this point, saying, Frank Martin has a lot of tools in his arsenal, but his biggest challenge will be keeping his composure under pressure. Gervonta is not just powerful. He's cunning and relentless. Frank needs to use his jab not just as a weapon, but as a tool to control the pace and distance of the fight. This advice from Ward underscores the tactical nuance required to compete with a fighter of Davis's caliber. However, Ward is also realistic about the challenges Martin faces. He acknowledges Davis's track record of finishing fights when he senses his opponent is vulnerable. Ward said, Gervonta has that rare ability to change the complexion of a fight with a single punch. Even if Frank is winning rounds, he can't afford to relax or lose focus for a moment. Davis has proven time and again that he can turn things around quickly. Despite his acknowledgement of Martin's skills and the importance of discipline, Ward leans towards Davis securing a late stoppage. He explains, While I believe Frank can present some real problems for Davis with a disciplined approach and effective use of his jab, Gervonta's power is a game-changer. He's shown resilience and the ability to close out fights, which is why I see him winning by late stoppage. Ward's prediction is rooted in his respect for both fighters' abilities, but also in his understanding of what it takes to succeed at the highest levels of boxing. He added, Both fighters have something to prove, but in the end, I believe Davis's experience in big moments will be the difference. Andre Ward provides a balanced and insightful analysis of the Martin vs. Davis bout, highlighting the importance of strategy, discipline, and mental toughness. His perspective not only reflects his expertise, but also his appreciation for the complexities of the sweet science. On the other hand, Teddy Atlas delves deep into the strategic elements at play in the upcoming bout between Gervonta Davis and Frank Martin. What I will confirm, what I will validate, what I will second is that he's a hell of a fighter. That, that he, he's, he's much more than what a lot of people thought he was, which was just a good puncher. He's a complete son of a gun. And not just physically, 
and technically, but mentally. Atlas articulates a clear path to victory for Martin, one predicated on resilience and tactical acumen. He said, Martin's ability to absorb pressure without folding will be crucial. He needs to establish his rhythm early, avoid getting trapped by Davis's aggression, and keep the fight within his comfort zone. Atlas further elaborates on the dynamic nature of Davis's fighting style, which combines technical skill with raw power. He expressed, Gervonta is not just a brawler, he's a thinker, a predator waiting for the right moment. According to Atlas, Davis's capacity to switch gears, to transform transition from a patient, analytical approach to a more aggressive, attacking mode is what sets him apart from many in the division. When Davis senses vulnerability, he pounces, and that's what makes him so dangerous, Atlas adds. However, Atlas doesn't discount Martin's chances outright. He acknowledges the younger fighter's technical prowess and ring IQ, suggesting that a disciplined approach could disrupt Davis's rhythm. According to Atlas, Martin has to use his jab not just as a weapon, but as a tool for control. If he can frustrate Davis and avoid major mistakes, he can steer the fight into deeper waters. Predicting a victory for Davis by knockout in the middle rounds, Atlas expects a compelling clash that will test the medal and resolve of both fighters. He thinks like a fighter. He behaves like a fighter in that ring. He, he, he is patient when he has to be patient. He is always contained and controlled. Conversely, Errol Spence has voiced his preference for Frank to face off against fighters such as Gervonta. He said, I know why he keeps saying Keyshawn Davis. I mean, he's a good fighter. I like him, but he always talks about, oh, I'm only five and zero. I'm only six and zero. Whatever he is, seven and zero. He always says that. So if he fights Frank and Frank beats him, he's going to say, oh, I was only seven and zero. It would definitely be a good fight. Spence conveyed that he believes Frank is prepared for more significant challenges, emphasizing the importance of timing. Spence added, I I feel like he's ready, but he's got to wait his time, man. I want to see Frank fight, you know? Maybe Shakur Stevenson, you've got Tank, a lot of big fights. He advocated for Frank to compete against more prominent adversaries such as Shakur Stevenson or Gervonta Davis, pointing out the financial and career advantages these matchups would offer compared to a bout with Keyshawn Davis. Spence said, he ain't getting paid nothing fighting Kay Davis, you know? At the end of the day, regardless of all these deals and things like that, it's about the money, man. He's sharp as hell, but somebody's got to get in there and make him uncomfortable. Meanwhile, Lennox Lewis has always had a keen eye for the technical aspects of boxing, and he believes this fight will be a showcase of skill and strategy. He notes that Martin's speed and agility could pose problems for Davis early on. However, Lewis predicts that Davis's power and experience in big fights will ultimately prevail. It's going to be a chess match, but I expect Gervonta to find his range and land the more impactful shots as the fight goes on, Lewis said. Sean Porter brings a fighter's perspective to the upcoming clash. Porter zeroes in on the psychological battleground that will underpin the physical contest. He said, It's all about belief and execution. Martin needs to step into that ring with unwavering confidence, fully convinced in his ability to secure the win. Porter elaborates on the importance of mental preparation leading up to fight night, suggesting that Martin's approach to training, strategy, and self-belief could decisively impact the bout's outcome. He added, Preparation is more than just physical. Martin has to mentally rehearse every scenario, so he's not just reacting in the ring, he's anticipating. However, Porter is equally cognizant of Davis's capabilities, particularly his adaptability and raw power, which have overwhelmed many opponents. Despite acknowledging Martin's potential to upset the odds, Porter leans towards Davis as the likely victor, citing his proven track record and dynamic skill set. So, that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos.